A manual shift car was a low price special that the dealers ordered for inventory for that motorist that wasn't willing to pay a penny more than necessary for basic transportation. And we all knew that older gentleman who wasn't going to give you a penny above cost hardly to buy that car. That vehicle usually was manual shift, no power steering, no power brakes, no AM radio. And the dealers were loath to carry it, but they carried a few. It was known as a cost saver. You shifted your own gears. A benefit at that time, the manual shift transmissions were more efficient with a gallon of gasoline than automatic transmissions back then. For many, many years, EPA fuel economy numbers usually were better for the manual or manual shift or stick shift transmissions, as we called them, as opposed to the automatics. Well, technology got better. Computers took over shifting automatics. And the computer programs got better, the logarithms got better, the algorithms got better, the vehicles got more efficient at burning gasoline, and then manuals took a different turn. Manuals then became more a performance issue, that you saw manual shift transmissions in performance cars, because then the driver would have more control over all that torque to use as they wanted in given driving situations. So it was no longer a cost savings because a lot of times now, uh, automatic transmissions are actually more efficient and give better EPA fuel economy numbers than manuals do. So it was no longer that. So as manual transmissions were all but gone in either the lowest cost cars, because it was still an issue of cost, because back in the day, the difference between having a vehicle equipped with a manual transmission as opposed to going an automatic transmission, which was a lot of the way that the early Japanese cars came to market, was roughly about $1,200, $1,300. So there was an incentive to save that money and shift your own gears. Then we got lazy and we wanted all this fancy stuff. The automakers found a way to still make it sexy for performance cars like the Dodge Challenger, the Dodge Charger, And the transmission of choice for many of the performance cars was actually made by a transmission manufacturer called Tremec. And the transmission that is favored that you would find in a Challenger, if you could find one that still had it, was a Tremec 6060. That's a six-speed manual transmission gearbox that's used. And it's so fun. However... With us getting more sophisticated and less desired to shift gears, the take rate last year for manual shift transmissions was 1%. 1% of vehicles sold came with a manual transmission. Just one. And that's down from recent when it was as high as 3%. And it's a good chance that probably in the next couple of years, the manual transmission, as we know it, will disappear entirely, particularly when we go to electric cars, because there is no such thing as a transmission. You don't need it. You have 100% of the torque from the minute you drop your foot. There's no need to shift. So there's that going on. So the question is, if you wanted to buy a manual shift car, can you still do it in 2022? And ironically enough, there's one automaker that still has a whole variety of manual shift vehicles. Last company you'd ever expect, Subaru. (laughs) Don't know why. You drove one. Yes. WTX, right? Uh, No. STRX or STX. Uh, The WRX STI. Yeah. Which is, I love that car. So much fun. Uh, But the list... Subaru BRX, Crosstrek, Impressa, the WRX, and the WRX STI are all ones you can buy from Subaru. It's sister car to the uh, BRX, the Toyota GR86, the Corolla you can still get in a manual transmission, and one of the few trucks you can still get with a manual transmission, the Toyota Tacoma. Volkswagen, and this is more performance-oriented, the Golf GTI, Golf R, and Jetta which you can get. You can still get it in Honda Civic, Korean, Hyundai Elantra, Velosta N. That's it. As far as Chevy, just two. The Camaro and the little Chevy Spark, which I'm still amazed is even in production. I thought that car had went away. As far as Dodge, Dodge Challenger. And here's one that's interesting. Originally, when the Ford Bronco, not the Bronco Sport, but when the Ford Bronco came out, they were not going to offer a manual transmission. The Bronco uh, faithful raised a stink. And the Ford Motor Company engineered in a manual transmission for the brand new Bronco. 
So it's one time where the automaker actually listened. They caved. And it's, well, it's a hard <laughs> engineering issue. Yeah. I mean, this yeah. is not just adding a trim level. This is a hard engineering issue. You think you're making money back on that? Uh, I bet they are. If you still, if you want a Jeep with a manual transmission, Jeep Gladiator and Wrangler are it. Oh, I'm sorry. There is one Kia. The Kia Forte. Mazda, Mazda 3, and the Miata Mini, Hardtop, Convertible, and Clubman. And the low Mitsubishi Mirage. So if you want one, you can still get one, but you're going to have to look for it. And I wouldn't wait. Yeah. I would, I would not wait because time is winding up on the manual transmission car. Miami will be ground zero for the launch of the urban air mobility industry. Assuming it's not underwater.